today I'm going to show you how to make a really simple, easy, basic sauerkraut recipe that tastes absolutely delicious. I know what you're thinking, sauerkraut, cabbage, doesn't sound that sexy. You're probably thinking about farting or you're probably thinking about the terribly tasting sauerkraut that you've bought from the supermarket, which by the way, tastes nothing like the real fermented sauerkraut that we're going to make here today. So the first thing you're going to need is a head of cabbage. Now with anything fermentation, you really want to make sure that everything is clean. So all your equipment needs to be thoroughly washed and cleaned and that goes for your produce too. So cut it up, or cut it in half, maybe quarters, and give it a really thorough washing, making sure that you're getting rid of all of the dirt and anything else that's out of the garden or from the supermarket and, you know, pesticides, etc. So once you cut that up, you're going to finally slice it. The thinner the better, you can use a knife, you can use a mandolin, you can use a processor, whatever you want to use, okay? So here I've got about eight cups of cabbage, which is two of these. So these are this is four cups, so I've got two of these, I've filled them up and popped them in here, and this weighs out at 800 grams. Okay, so the next step in making sauerkraut is to add in your salt, and the salt is what's going to help with fermentation and it's also going to help to release all of the, the liquid from your cabbage which is going to create a, a briny liquid and help with the fermentation. Now salt, please don't use table salt or any other salt that has additives in it, you really just want the pure rock salt on its own. Right, so this is 800 grams. Now for 500, every 500 grams you want to use about one teaspoon of salt. So for 800 grams here, I'm using a teaspoon and a half of salt. You really just want to put that in. Now, all you, and I'm also adding, I nearly forgot this step, garlic. Garlic is amazing, it's so good for you, but this, adding in some garlic really takes this sauerkraut to the next level. I've got about two large uh, garlic cloves in here and I've finely diced them. So I'm going to put them in as well. Yeah, this garlic tastes really good. Now, all you need to do is get to work. We want to really macerate this cabbage as much as possible and we want to do it for about like five minutes or so to really make sure that we start releasing all of the juices out of the cabbage. And it really just is about... And this is why I say make sure that your hands are really clean. We're really just getting in there and we're just macerating it as much as possible. So really just getting in there and macerating it. So I've must have been macerating this for at least five minutes or so and it's really started to let some liquids out. So you've really got like a really good amount of liquid in there. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is pop these into some clean sterilised jars. I really like these ball mason ones because they've got uh, a wide neck on them and they're really easy to sort of stuff the cabbage into. So basically, you want to be just filling up your jars and every time you put a little bit in, you want to be pushing it down so that the brine is covering the cabbage. It's really important when you're making the sauerkraut is that the brine is always covering that cabbage and that prevents any kind of mould and just keeps it well preserved and allows the fermentation process to keep on kicking along. Right, now, I know it probably feels like I haven't filled this jar up very much, but what's going to happen is when this starts fermenting, it will start to expand. So you really want to make sure that you've got, you know, a, a bit of space at the top of your jar because as the days come on, this cabbage will, will rise up. Okay, so really, really pack that in there as much as you can and make sure that you've got a fair bit of liquid coming over there. Right, now I've got these awesome weights. I'm not sure where I bought them from now, I've had them a while, but these are really good for making fermented stuff because it basically holds all the, the cabbage underneath the brine. So I'm going to put that in there and I'm going to press that down. And as you can see, that's just pure brine on the top. Right, now 
there if you don't have these weights I've also read and I haven't actually used but I can't see why it wouldn't work um, plastic bags filled with water placed in the top like that uh, river pebbles some people actually use the core of the cabbage to um, weigh it down I don't really like doing that um, but I I totally rate this and then you know if, you, if you're serious about making a fermented uh, sauerkraut or any kind of fermented vegetables, they're really, those weights are a really, really cheap, easy option as well. So another thing with fermentation and making sauerkraut is you can buy these fancy airlock lids and it's basically a lid and it's got um, an airlock in it and it'll see above it. You use it a lot in beer and things like that. I don't have that. So basically I'm just gonna put on my lid, not super tight. If you put it on tight, all you're gonna to need to make sure is that every day you come along and you take the lid off and just release the gases. I have found that if I put these lids on kind of loose, uh, they kind of are able to release those gases as they go along. Now I'm gonna go and put that in somewhere sort of like a, a darkish spot out of the way in my kitchen. Basically, I like putting it into the kitchen because the kitchen's a little bit warmer and like with anything uh, fermentation, the temperature is really going to affect how quickly or how slowly things ferment. Warmer temperatures, things ferment quicker. Uh, colder temperatures, they take a little bit longer. But basically, I um, have this counter here and I just pop them underneath here and I'll leave them for about a week. The longer you let them ferment, the tangier and the, the stronger the flavour is going to go. I have found that after a week, mine are pretty good and I'll put them in the fridge. So there you go. That is how you make a really simple, easy sauerkraut recipe that tastes amazing. This is all I've got left at the moment, uh, which is why I'm making some more, but literally I have it on um, in my salads, sandwiches. I've had, I have it on steak. I'm loving it with omelette at the moment. It goes really, really good with avocado as well. And I just like eating it out the jar. This is another um, sauerkraut that I made I think last week. And this has actually got the addition of uh, carrot and beetroot in it as well, just for something a little bit different. So yeah, fermenting, there's heaps of books out there, heaps of information on the internet if you wanna get really, really serious about it. But if you wanna just start out and you wanna just sort of just mystify the whole fermentation uh, process, this is an awesome recipe to get you started with. Anyway, take it easy. See ya.